Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my home in Michigan. I can't wait to show you around. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the Join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Vanessa Shaveri Gratz, and we are here in my 1926 registered historic tutor on Groziel, Michigan. My husband and I have historically moved a lot for our careers. Um, his job, his old job, actually brought us to different parts of Texas and different parts of California over the last seven years. Uh, fairly recently, he though found a new career and put us both in remote career positions. So for the first time ever, or at least since we've been together, we had full control over where we lived. And one night, uh, drinking a little bit of wine on the sofa, we were scrolling Trulia just for fun, just to see what real estate was out there because we love looking at real estate, love seeing what's out in the market. And we happened upon this absolutely beautiful 1926 Tudor on a little island in Michigan. And as fate would have it, we were already scheduled to come into town about a week later, as this is where my husband's family is from. And we were coming into town for a wedding and decided, let's just go look at it. Let's just see what it's about just for fun. Nothing serious. We were living in Dallas, Texas. We owned a home. We'd only been there for two years. And the minute we walked into this house, it, it sold us. We knew it, the charm, the creaky floors, everything about it just gave us chills and we put an offer the next day. So when you first walk into the house, you can kind of get a good visual of everything. What I love and what we did very strategically is we placed this vintage piano here this is honestly one of my favorite secondhand finds. I got this for free at an estate sale. It didn't sell, and so they just wanted to offload it. And I took lessons as a kid. I am now taking lessons via YouTube and slowly but surely learning, but I just think it's so beautiful here. And honestly, the wall space was so perfect for it. And I love that it's just an awesome place to display art, um, you know, again, secondhand finds and it's just, it's a nice little welcome into the house. It's really funny when we host people, people will usually sit down and play around on it. And so we're going to go into the living room from here. The living room is really the heart of the home and one of my favorite spaces in this house. I really wanted this space to feel cozy and warm and I wanted it to be the landing like the landing hub for when everyone came in, we gathered. Um, so we collected just, in my opinion, beautiful pieces. I have a very clear color palette. You'll notice as you go through the house, I'm a huge fan of green. It is a neutral for me. And I do a lot of brass, a lot of woods. Um, I like to mix textures and different textiles and things of that sort. And then as you come this way, you'll see one of my favorite projects, which is our gallery wall. Gallery wall is something I've had in every single home that we have lived in. This is probably my favorite though. Everything here is either from a local artist, someone I connected with online, or something I found at a thrift store or an estate sale. I just really love collecting beautiful pieces and pairing it with, again, something new and old. So this is definitely a, a very proud portion of the house for me. So when it comes to gallery wall creation, I actually like a little bit of chaos. 
I do very little planning with gallery walls. I'll typically figure out what my centerpiece is and maybe a couple surrounding pieces. You'll likely find me laying them out just on the floor, getting a bird's eye view, <laughs> stepping on top of the furniture to get an idea of what it would look like. But for the most part, I like to just play around with it. I like it to be very organic and I honestly change it very often. If you were to take all of these frames down, there's probably a hundred holes in the wall <laughs> from me moving things around, trial and error. But honestly, that's what I love about interior decorating. It's the trial and error. It's figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. And this is probably not gonna be the last rendition. We're, there's gonna be some changes, but I just love the flexibility and the fluidness of just throwing some art on the wall and seeing how it looks. These are pine cone candle holders. I got these at a Goodwill this last holiday season. They're metal and they were just so unique and fun. We are surrounded by pine trees, a lot of evergreens on our property, and it just felt right. Even though they were technically holiday decor, they feel like year-round decor in our house. So fun fact, historically, I was never a fan of built-in shelving. It felt like I was forced to put things on the walls and I never loved that. However, we walked into this house and they had two symmetrical bookshelves on either side of the living room. And these were actually additions. They're not original to the home. I'm not quite sure what year they were put in, but they were just so perfectly placed. And I just felt really inspired to use these as just like the canvas for all of the things I've collected, for all of the special things that are either from my family or my husband's or just we found during our travels. So. You'll find a collection of a little bit of everything. I've got candles and books and art and antiques. Uh, we actually have a really special little memento here. This is um, a ceramic and brass owl that my grandmother gave me. She is originally from England, but lives in Australia now. And I specifically asked her when we moved into this house, hey, is there anything that you can give me that's yours, that's special to you that I can have in this house of you? And so this little item is really cute and it opens up so it's a little treasure trove. Um, but that's what these bookshelves are filled with. They're filled with just special items from, again, everywhere. Over here, again, I really, I love books. Books as decor is one of my favorite things. It's such a good filler. And I specifically love to find books that are really old. If I can find them with inscriptions, that's even better. I actually even have a photo. This is a photo of Caleb Diedrichsen. He was the original owner of this house in 1926. So him and his family lived here for several years. And I looked high and low on the internet to find a portrait of him because I felt like it was really special that we paid homage to the original people that designed this house and lived here and created memories. So something about me is I love a deal and I do love secondhand anything. I'm a huge Facebook marketplace shopper. This mirror is probably my proudest find. We found this just a couple hours away from us here in Michigan, and we had no idea how large it was when we picked it up. You know, they give you dimensions for these things, but we showed up and this was just the most beautiful, giant antique mirror. I was so excited. I, I paid $70 for this, and it is honestly my prized possession. If the house is on fire and I could only take one thing, it would be me trying to lug this out of this house. <laughs> So the chess set here is actually because I have a goal of learning to play chess. I grew up with my dad and my brother, always playing into the wee hours of the night, and I never truly understood it. Josh knows how to play, so my 10-year plan is that he'll eventually teach me. I'll eventually have the patience for him to teach me. So it's here in case anyone comes into the house and plays, or if I get motivated one day. When we moved in, this house was in pretty much immaculate shape. The previous owners and their family had been here for over 40 years. And actually part of the, you know, the selling point is that they had put in over $200,000 worth of renovation in that 40 years. Um, they completely replaced the windows. They did a full kitchen refresh. They added in a, um, a shower upstairs. So things that this old home just needed to be updated over time. So we were in a great scenario where we were able to come in and truly really just put our stamp on it with decor. Um, we definitely have plans longer term for some smaller changes, but honestly, this house was ready for us. So the fireplace was one of the very first selling points of this house. This house has so many selling points personally, but this is the original plaster fireplace to the home. We actually have the original kind of mock-up and build of the house and it showcases the fireplace and it's just absolutely stunning. The detail in this wet plaster work is incredible. There's actually a crest here. It's kind of faded out, but 
I don't know for sure. My hope is that maybe that crest is from the original family. I hope it has a special meaning to that. Since I don't know, I'm going to claim that, that this is a special crest. But this fireplace is truly just a work of art. And it's one of the first things that everyone talks about when they come into the house. And um, it's wood burning, although we actually transitioned it to gas as well. So we can do both in the pinch. And it's just one of my favorite pieces. And we put up the frame TV here, actually. This was a bit of a, a, a strong discussion between my husband and I when we identified this home and that we were gonna purchase it. I told him there was absolutely no way we were putting an ugly black TV on this mantle. It was either gonna be art or it was gonna be nothing. And so the frame TV was actually a great middle ground for us. I can change the art to whatever I want and it looks like a painting. And it's also one of the things that people walk in and say, oh, I love that piece of art. And it's always so fun to let them know. It's just a TV. So this is a brass firebox. Fun fact, when we moved in, there was one almost identical to this. Um, it was the previous owners and I begged them to sell it to me. They said no though, it was a family heirloom, so I totally understood, but I was absolutely inspired by what they had here and it was filled with firewood and I thought it was so beautiful. So I went online and I found a secondhand one and had it shipped to me and I'm, I just absolutely love it. We don't actually fill it with wood, it's just filled with random things that I need throughout the house, but it's a great hiding place for kind of your junk, but it, it's absolutely stunning. It's vintage and I absolutely adore it. I mentioned that I love everything equestrian and just Western and it's adorned with horses. So it felt really right for us and for our home. So something about me is I will find a way to make anything art <laughs> and or decor. Um, these are the original blueprints to the house. So something really special about this space is we are the fifth owner of this home, but every homeowner has passed down the original deed and the original blueprint. So I think it's so special that everyone thought it was worth it to keep these in good condition. Um, they were just in a plastic bag when we took the keys to the house. And I thought, why not make a bouquet of it in the home? And so every once in a while, we'll pull these out and show them to friends or family. But I thought it was just a fun decor piece. Again, I love anything that you can repurpose. I love giving new life to items that maybe were just stuck in a basement prior. And so something like this is really special to me. And um, it's a definitely a talking point for sure. Another talking point actually is my art right over here. I, for some reason, have an affinity for finding art of people I don't know. Um, I find it fun, it's interesting. I like to jokingly give these people names. And I found this piece actually while on a work trip uh, in Louisiana, and I found him at an antique store, and he is just so fun. I call him the radiator art because, well, what else are you gonna put on top of a radiator other than a great piece of art? And so um, I call him George. Don't know if that's his real name, but he's special to us. The frame is absolutely stunning. And I'm just drawn to beautiful things and I'll find any place to put them. One of my firm beliefs is being able to mix new and old. So my house is full of antiques. It's full of vintage decor and items, but a lot of my furniture is actually brand new. And so in this case, we were able to combine, you know, a secondhand vintage stunning rug with newer furniture. These green chairs are from West Elm. They are a crowd favorite. They're the perfect shade of green. And because green is a neutral to me, I thought, why not have green furniture in my home? And the velvet is so much fun. And I do love just mixing those different textures. And then I added in white blue clay swivel chairs, which we love because with this being a TV, it's easy for someone to just swivel, whether they're in conversation or we're watching a game or something together. Um, I got a lot of questions when asked why I'm gonna put white in my home. We have a lot of family members with kids, we have a dog, but thankfully nothing, nothing insane has happened. They've been protected and we love it here. It's just, again, like I like mixing new and old. I like the fact that this furniture feels a little mid-century modern, but everything around it feels very classic. It feels traditional, it feels English country. It feels like a Tudor, but it still meshes really well together. And that's why I am, such a believer that you can do whatever you want in your house. If it makes sense for you and it feels good to you, go for it. A few other really special items in this room and that go throughout the house as well are these original wood floors. They creak, they are definitely not quiet at all, but something about that is just so charming. They also kind of wave, there's a little bit of movement here, but again, with an old home, kind of the beauty of it is the imperfections and those imperfections make me feel that I don't have to be perfect in any way, shape or form as well. So the original wood floors were something that we absolutely fell in love with immediately. Um, and then additionally, the crown molding. 
So the, all of these walls, you'll notice, have a really thick texture. So it's all wet plaster. And the same for the crown molding. And the crown molding goes throughout most of the bottom floor of the house. And something that's just really special to us and immediately draws your eye. And I'm just so, so grateful we get to, we get to live here. I like to describe my design style as kind of a cluster of things. I don't feel like our home is just one style. I very much leaned mid-century modern in our last house, and so we still have a lot of those pieces here, and I still find a lot of inspiration from mid-century. But we're in an English-style Tudor, and I thoroughly believe in letting a house lead you as far as your design and what you put into it. So although I had some mid-century modern aspects, I started incorporating a lot more traditional, a lot more English country, a little bit of French modern because I just love the way that looks. Um, also some Western. I am very drawn to equestrian for a couple different reasons. One, I grew up with a horse and so that's part of my childhood. But two, my mom is actually from England and so a lot of her personal style comes with me as well. So it's, it's definitely a mix. So when someone asks me that, I give them the full list of things they will find in my home. There are so many things I love about this house. I have a mile long list. However, I would say my top two, the original plaster fireplace that's behind me, this was an instant selling point. You see it the minute you walk into the house and it is so intricate and unique and we just absolutely fell in love. I love a fire. It is so cozy and warm and I just love any scenario where you can just feel your most comfortable at home. But I would say second is our sunroom and it's such a unique space. This was actually addition to the house in the 50s. It is a fully temperature controlled room with indoor and in-ground garden beds, meaning I can grow fruits, vegetables, or just tropical plants in any season in Michigan, which is pretty unheard of considering we have pretty harsh winters here, but it's stunning. It is full of plant life. It came with plant life when we bought the house and we've incorporated our own as well. I have a, a small lemon tree. I'm growing figs. I'm so in love with this space and it's just so special to us. Now let me walk you into our sunroom. So welcome to our sunroom. Got a little step down here. This was actually an addition to the house. So this was put in in the late 40s, early 50s. Actually, a article was written about this room specifically in the Detroit Free Press because it was the first of its time. These tiles are heated. And so that is how this room stays warm. We've got a full thermostat that, that just controls it. And it's honestly just such a special space. So in addition to the heated tiles, this room has an entire, I would say about four to five feet of in-ground plant beds, meaning I can plant things literally into our ground inside the house. It's just the coolest space. I love plants. In our last house, we had a sunroom, just a traditional room with lots of windows and lots of light. And so when we saw this, this was one of those moments where I said, okay, this house is for me because there's a space where I can put my plants and they're gonna thrive. And wanting to make this space really green and lush, we added a few things. So first we added a full wall mural of a just stunning mountain landscape. That was actually my husband's idea. That was one of those ideas that I said, hey, that's, that's really good, let's do that. Um, and that just adds to the green space. And then we also painted the ceiling green as well. And that's something that was really special to me. It was just original uh, pine, just white beadboard. And I wanted it to feel a lot more cozy, a lot more warm. And I wanted to play off of the green plants in the room. And then we've added just some kind of fun, funky things in the space. You'll notice a horse saddle behind me. I mentioned earlier, I have, I had a horse growing up. I love equestrian. I wanted to be a professional, like, cowgirl at one point in my life. Didn't happen, but I like to pay homage to things like that. So this is one of my very trusty Facebook Marketplace finds. I love displaying it. It's just, again, one of those moments that feels special to me because that was my childhood and really, really good decor. But other than that, this room is just full of plants. I find them everywhere. Some of these came with us from our move from Texas. Um, a lot of them though, I found at local nurseries and plant shops. And we've just added pieces that were unique and special to us. So secondhand, these were secondhand club chairs from a place called the Detroit Club, which is a hundred year old plus institution here in the Metroplex. And even items like our green sofa. 
again, green is a neutral for me. And so putting more and more green in our house just felt right. And it felt especially right for this room. Um, this is fairly new. This is from one of my favorite companies, Interior Define, and they make fully custom furniture, but just at affordable pricing. And so this is kind of our landing space for all things recreation, whether it, a football game is on, whether it's gonna be a movie night or we're hosting an event, because hidden behind these doors is another TV. And what's really cool about this, so when this room was built, this used to be a wood burning oven. There's a full fireplace here with, that goes outside. They had burners and the family that was here used to grow fruits and vegetables in the ground and then cook them here. And this was their kind of all season room. And somewhere in the probably 60s or 70s, it got transitioned into just a TV space, but it's really unique and fun. And it's one of those things that is so special to this house and just interesting. And I just, I'm a fan, we love it. I definitely deal with all the normal plant parent things, even though these plants are in the house. So things like pests are just, they just come with the territory. And it's something I've known for several years now, I've, I've battled with several years now. Um, that's kind of one of the beauty of having all of the live plants in one space. It's kind of contained, but yeah, I definitely, I struggle. The in-ground beds, weeds grow here. I literally pick weeds in this room. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious, but just such an interesting and unique space. So the light above the dining table is a reproduction of a Tiffany inspired chandelier. It has interesting grapes and just beautiful tones, greens, of course. This was a Facebook marketplace find. Again, it's just like my go-to and it was so affordable. I think the owner gave it to me for $20 and I just couldn't say no. And I just think it's such a beautiful addition to this space. It looks like it would have already been here. And that's what I love doing in our house is finding pieces that feel like they were here from the beginning. And it's not you know odd or different, but it just feels right in the space. Something else that kind of felt right in the space is our antique armoire. We actually purchased this from the previous owner. This used to be their TV wardrobe in the main living room. And we thought it was such a beautiful piece and we wanted it for ourselves, but something that we repurposed and also hid something interesting in. This is my husband's liquor cabinet. So this is one of the reasons why we usually host parties in this room. <laughs> He's a huge collector of whiskeys and tequilas and we just thought this cabinet was the perfect place to display them and it's just such a fun talking point and it's always hilarious when we open this up and people are very surprised i am a tequila gal my go-to cocktail is actually margarita i pride myself on making a delicious margarita and that's probably from my texas roots it's just ingrained in me uh, tequila ocho is my absolute favorite tequila and so we always keep that on deck but my husband is a big whiskey drinker. He's a classic whiskey with a rock and just very simple man, but not so simple because he collects so many different whiskeys and it's kind of insane how many different, you know, brands and styles and flavors are out there. And so you'll notice there's a big collection of things here. His absolute favorite is called a Midwinter's Night Dram. It's incredibly hard to find and it's incredibly expensive. So when he can't find it, it's honestly really good on our pocketbook. <laughs> so I do a few different things professionally. Um, full time on my LinkedIn, I am an optometrist recruiter for a company called Warby Parker and I've been with them for a little over nine years and several different capacities and have moved around with that company, um, different states and cities as well and absolutely adore it. However, in the last two to three years, I've actually added virtual interior decorating to my resume truly through my content creation. So I look at this house as my canvas and I started sharing it regularly online in 2020. Um, I started a blog and I just wanted to share what my passion was, which was decorating my home. I grew up with a mom who decorated and redecorated our house all the time. She was an interior painter and I find a lot of inspiration in the fact that you can just change your mind and change your space and get something new and fresh out of it. So I, I consider myself having three, three different careers, the recruiting, the interior decorating, and then also the content creation. Let me show you our dining room. Now, welcome to our dining room. It changes pretty significantly when you walk in here, it gets a lot darker, but 
this is just such a special space. So when we moved in, every room in the house was kind of a pale yellow. This room, however, I just envisioned color washed in green and it turned out beautiful. But funny story, my painter very much thought it was gonna be an awful idea. <laughs> And pretty much everyone did. My husband was concerned, my in-laws, they said, are you sure you want an entire room of dark green? And I said, just wait, just wait, guys. And it's just a dream. We did the same exact color top to bottom. So we did flat walls and ceiling with a high gloss trim. And that just made that wet plaster molding really pop. And I love the way it looks in this green tone. And then I paired them with monotone velvet curtains to give the room a bit, of, a bit of a royal feel, but also to just really dive into that green feeling. Everything in this room is special for some reason. Um, I actually saw a picture of someone else's house where they had a, a easel with an antique piece of art. And I immediately said, I need to recreate that. And this was an estate sale find actually here on the island when we first moved in. It was a house just a couple streets over and they had this stunning piece and I had to have it. Um, and something else that's actually really special is these metal boots. I got these at a store. They're about 25, maybe 30 pounds. And again, just kind of paying tribute to my Texas roots. And I love finding pieces like that. I love finding pieces that are just special and unique. Uh, you can definitely stub your toe on this thing. It's kind of a hazard, but they're beautiful, so we keep them. And these pieces of art, we actually purchased from the original owner. One of their very good friends who unfortunately had passed away sketched these, and these are all different spaces, churches here on the island. So kind of, again, paying that tribute to where we live and keeping it local if we can. Now, as far as furniture, really again i love mixing the new and old this is a full west elm set that i just we fell in love with we actually had this table uh, in our last house it's mango wood it feels right in here it's good enough space for when we're hosting but it's also i like that it kind of adds a modern flair to this room that feels very old you know with the the older chandelier we have an antique curio cabinet that we also purchased from the previous owner um, they had such amazing taste and such great pieces. And so we were really lucky that they were willing to pass some of those down to us. This piece is really, really special. Uh, a good friend of mine, Heather, she's an artist and she very wonderfully gifted us this beautiful portrait of the front of her house. And it was something that I, this house is just so special to us. The way we found it, how we're here. I mean, I never felt more at home anywhere than I am in this house. So I wanted to make sure we had something to hold on to should we ever leave for any reason. So that is a really special piece to us. But overall, this room is just one of my favorite places to host. It's warm, it's cozy, it feels really elevated and elegant, but you feel like you can still be yourself here, which I love. And then lastly, one of my favorite pieces, this is a faux willow tree. I get so many questions about this. This is from a brand called Nearly Natural. I'm as much as I love my real plants, not every room in this house gets great light. So I'm a big believer in faux. If you can't do real, go faux, why not? So this tree was absolutely stunning and they so graciously sent it to us and it's just so perfect here. So when it's not Christmas and we don't have Christmas trees, our big willow is the star of the show. When burning candles and kind of having a scent here in our house, there's two scents that I consider pretty signature. Currently, because we're still kind of in winter, I'm still burning fir, like fir garland, because we're surrounded by all of these pine and oak and just fir trees. It feels kind of holiday still, but my signature scent is called Baltic Amber from Valespa. It is still a little holiday. It's a little sweet. It's a little vanilla, but it just is so calming. It's my absolute favorite season. I feel it's so much peace during it. So we're going we're gonna to burn the noble fir a little bit longer. So I'm gonna very carefully move this candle and I'm gonna show you the coolest chair ever. The chair was also a Facebook Marketplace find and it serves a couple different purposes. So I'm 5'3", pretty short, and we've got some tall cabinets in our kitchen. I discovered this chair. It's called a library ladder chair and it was intended for you to be able to climb up and get books off of tall library bookshelves. This converts into a ladder. And so I use this in our kitchen because there's cabinets I just can't reach. And I thought, what a great way 
to be able to have function, four man function in one, because I didn't want one of those little ugly step stools sitting in my kitchen. And this is so incredible. It's about 90 years old. I found it from someone here on the island that was selling it. And she was so excited I knew what it was and that it was gonna go to a good home. And it's such a fun conversation piece. Truly, one of the moments where you, you truly get form and function in one. It's, it's so, so cool. I am a more is more type of host. I love having people in our house. I love welcoming them in and making them feel at home and feel like they're in a really elevated, elegant space, but also casual and just easy. So I actually host a once a month ladies wine night and that is one of my favorite things. I invite all my girlfriends over. The table is full of charcuterie. Everyone brings a bottle of wine to share, so we're tasting anywhere between eight and 10 different wines, and it's kind of an all-night event. It's so much fun. But outside of that, we love to host things like birthday parties. We'll host a holiday cocktail party, um, Super Bowl, really anything as an excuse to get people to our house, we will do it because we love wowing them with great food and great drinks. So this is an antique fireplace screen. It's actually a little bit too small for our fireplace, which is why it's not there, but this was my mom's and she graciously gifted it to us. She knew it would look great in our house and so I absolutely took it. And this is a good example of kind of a unique piece of art. I love finding things that you can use to display in your home that are maybe not what it's intended to do, but for me, I mean, the brass picture here is just so stunning. It's really unique and I love having it here. It's kind of random, but I love it. So our marble top bar cabinet here is something that was originally a contention point between my husband because he had to drive six hours round trip to pick this up. Like I said, when you find something secondhand that's special, especially a deal, like I just can't say no. We got this for $100. It was when we were living in Texas and it was three hours there and three hours there to three hours there and three hours back to pick it up. And it is just absolutely stunning. It's totally imperfect, which again is something I love about old homes and old things. They tell a story. And so this houses a lot of our bar tools, um, wine bottle openers, a few extra decor pieces that I don't have room for, but this is where we what we use to display some of his favorite whiskeys, some antique bar glasses I found this giant bust of David that I recently picked up about a month and a half ago, and it was just so unique and different. And I said, well, why not? You'll notice I actually have a lot of like statues and busts around the house. I just think they're such a beautiful piece of decor. Another thing that I am a big collector of is lamps. Our house doesn't get a ton of natural light, so lamp o'clock is very real here, and I will put a lamp anywhere there's an outlet. This lamp, is a stunning vintage piece that I got for a steal. And I love pairing it with, again, secondhand sh shades. I actually, anytime I go to a thrift store and there are lampshades, I'll usually buy them and store them in our basement for the inevitable, which is when I bring a new lamp home. I would definitely say my personal style is very much collected. I'm a firm believer in bringing things into your home that are either special to you or that you just find special in general. I love mixing new and old, so antique and modern. I am a huge vintage and antique shopper. I love an estate sale, I love a thrift store, I love an antique mall. And what I love about items like that is they come with a story. It may not be yours, but it was someone else's. And I love that you can give an item like that a second, third, or fourth life. And so when people come into my home, they can expect a lot of unique, a lot of likely old things that come with some type of story. And some of them are my story, my husband's story, and then stories of people we don't know. Um, but I think what I love about a collected style is it also makes you feel very cozy, very at home. And that was always my goal, is that when someone walked into my house, they immediately felt warm, they felt welcomed, and there were so many things around that draw their eye that they could inquire about. And I love talking about the things I bring into my home. So when it comes to interior decorating and how me and my husband work together, we actually work together really well. I would say I take about 90% of the role here. I do a lot of the sourcing myself, I the decorating, kind of the planning, things of that sort. But he has a great eye and I ask his opinion 
almost always. He'll even go sourcing with me to antique shops. He's He's usually the muscle to drag everything out of the store and get it into the house for me, which is absolutely necessary. But I'm really thankful that he has complete faith and trust in me. There's been several times where I've made decisions and he for sure thought it was gonna come out awful. And then I did it and uh, he apologized later. <laughs> Next, let's go check out the breakfast nook. We joke that this is kind of like our own little diner. Um, it's right off the kitchen and this was original to the house. So this was actually part of the original blueprint. These benches and the table are bolted to the floor. We definitely have plans long-term to maybe restain it or cover it in fabric because I want this to be really quaint and cozy. But I added the green curtains because we love green in this house. Um, new lighting and then to no one's surprise, more equestrian inspired art. So I have saddles behind me here, um, horses here. And then from there, we just added some cozy features like pillows, a few flowers. This lamp is actually really special. This is a, another Tiffany inspired lamp, but the previous owner made this. He made it originally for his sister, got it back and they were just not planning on keeping it. So we asked when we purchased the house if we could purchase it along with it. And that's one of those really special pieces because it's it's part of who they were and they were here for such a long time. So I love that we can, we can respect that. But this is our nook. And so this is our kitchen. The kitchen was actually redone in 2015 after the house experienced a little bit of a flood. And they did a great job. They put really high quality cabinetry and counters in here. I definitely plan to put my own stamp on this. I have always had a dream of having green cabinets. It's gonna be a very green house. But one day we plan to update it ourselves. This area was really cute though. This is a little coffee bar. This is where we keep all of our specialty glasses. And this is where we start our day every morning. I actually even went as far to put special art sort of in here. And I had both my mom and my mother-in-law hand write me and my husband's favorite recipes and we framed them. And so that was really special. Like, again, I just, I love adding pieces of your family members into your home, even if it's just a handwritten chicken and dumpling recipe. But as you go into the rest of the kitchen, it's a pretty good size for the house. Granite countertops, um, I try to add art wherever I can. So there's a giant antique painting over here that could feel out of place, but for me, it just feels just right. Um, we actually have a lot of wildlife on the island. There are ducks and swans and Canadian geese everywhere. And there's um, a male and a female duck that tend to come on our property very often during the winter. My husband and I jokingly named them the Quacksteins. And so one of my friends who's an artist painted one of our quack scenes for us. And so that's really special and fun. But we, uh, we spent a lot of time in this space, specifically my husband, as he is the cook in the house. I spent a lot of time drinking wine and emotionally supporting him while he's cooking. Um, but we're proud of it. Got a little bit of antique plates up here. And honestly, just such a beautiful bay window that looks out to our neighbor's property, but also to a few of the pine and fir trees in our property. I have definitely always loved interior decorating. I remember as a child, my mom giving me a lot of leeway of what I wanted my room to look like. At one point it was purple and green walls with a floral border in the center and matching bedding and a matching rug. And then at one point I wanted to completely change it. And she always gave me that freedom to say, okay, my style has changed. Let's adjust your space so it feels like you. And I think that really kind of kickstarted my thought process of design and decor and just making your space feel like you is so important. And I love being able to do that in my space. And so it's been really fun to also kind of slowly help other people do that as well. I think what can really bring a home to life is being intentional about what items you're bringing into it. So for me, what gives my house a soul is bringing in items that are special to me, special to my husband's family, to my family. Even if you're bringing in something that has no connection to you, but it gives you joy. It 
excites you. I think that's what really can bring it home to life. It could be a piece of art on the wall. It could be a collection of antique books. It could be a plant. Um, I'm really big on plant life in my house as well, not only for the oxygenation, but also it, it feels lively in here. And so I think it's, it's subjective. You know, one of the things that I would say bothers me about the design and decor industry is that there's so many rules and I think those rules are meant to be broken. I think you do what makes the most sense for you in your home. And if you follow your gut and what you feel is right, your house is going to be the best space for you and it's gonna feel like you and it's gonna come alive. Now, before we go upstairs, I want to give you a quick peek into our powder room. It's one of the few places that we actually did a DIY in this house when we moved in. And then I'll show you a little bit about the hallway. Follow me. So my husband and I joke that this is our Harry Potter bathroom because it's so tiny. And when we moved in, it was a little bit lifeless. It just had gray walls. It does have the original tile floors though. So we wanted to make it a little bit bolder while also trying to keep some of the original details to it. And when I say a little bit bolder, we went very bold. I'm always inspired when I go to great hotels or restaurants or museums and they have beautiful bathrooms. And so I wanted that for us. I wanted our guests to have a space that they were just wowed when they walked into. The wallpaper here is very bold and surprise, it's green. <laughs> um, we went with a striped kind of striated pattern. This is from a company called Mind the Gap, which is UK based. I end up finding and loving things from the UK and I feel like that just, again, pays homage to this home and kind of the style it was created in. So we went really bold with the wallpaper. We painted the trim and the ceiling high gloss black because we wanted it to feel moody and interesting, but somehow it still worked really well with these white and gray original tile floors. That was just something we didn't want to disturb. And so for me, it took a little bit of time to find patterns that would work well together, but they work really well. And also we have some fun pieces of art in here. There's a piece of art of someone who we don't know who it is. I named him Francis and I joke that he is the bathroom attendant. He creeps everybody out and that's kind of the hilarious part of it. So he's not going anywhere. Now, I really wanna show you this hallway because I am, I don't consider myself a DIYer. I've done small projects. I am not, I'm not the gal that's gonna be what, knocking down walls, but this is something I did myself. So these walls were again, that kind of just soft yellow beige that the whole house was. We had them painted white and then I stenciled this myself. I really wanted wallpaper, but all of our walls are thick, heavy plaster and they're just not conducive to wallpaper in general. So I spent about 10 hours. I started one night at 5 p.m. and just went through the night stenciling this wall. And it was so much fun to complete that project, step back and say, I did that. But what's really special in my opinion is that it looks like it could have been here the entire time. It has that very vintage feel. It feels a little French country, which is again, one of those, one of those fun things for me to like just introduce different styles into our home. And so I not only added the stencil, but then I added a few pieces of art as well. So I have these really stunning antique brass candle sconces. And then this is a maple leaf of a tree that fell on our front property. So shortly after we moved in, there was a hundred year old tree out of front. It was so, so beautiful. It was again, one of those many selling points for us. And unfortunately it fell in a storm. So after it had fallen, I went and I found the largest leaf I could and we framed it as just a memory for what was. We do plan on replanting, which I'm very excited that's gonna happen this year, but I thought what a special moment and something that the previous owners could find special as well because we actually have a really good relationship with them. Previous owners, they moved probably five streets away and actually popped by pretty often. So it's really special for me when I get to welcome them in the house and show them things that are memories of theirs. Now, let's go upstairs. Now this is our spare bedroom. This was a fairly recent project for me. This room was very green, lime green when we moved in. Child's lime green to give you a visual. And I knew I wanted a space for when we had family or friends stay with us where they felt really cozy and comfortable. And so we originally painted it white 
just give it a fresh slate. And then I very quickly realized I wanted something a little bit darker. And a friend of mine used this exact color in her living room and I was so inspired. It's called Chestnut by Benjamin Moore. And it's in a matte, which you usually don't see in rooms. And it is just the most stunning and rich maroon. It's, depending on the time of day, it feels purple, it feels brown. And I just love the, I don't know, the transition this color gives you. And so I wanted to incorporate pieces into this room that again, I felt like they could have always been in this house. I wanted this room to feel a little bit older, very vintage. Um, so this is a, just a brand new, just online metal bed that had some details to it that I felt were pretty timeless and paired it with this just insanely stunning golden velvet bedspread. It is so luxurious and it's so fun. It's from West Elm and I thought it paired perfectly with the color of these walls. And so we added a few special pieces, one being the portrait of our dog. Our dog's name is Kona. He's a Shiba Inu and this is Colonel Kona. <laughs> and we thought that that would just be fun and whimsical, but of course special to us. And then I added even more special pieces. So in my love of tapestries, I found this online and the woman I purchased it from, she lived in Ohio, so just a state away. And she so graciously offered to ship it to me and she gave me such a deal for it. It's so huge and I feel like the colors pair perfectly with the color on the wall. And for this room, what I did is I picked the the wall color first and then started adding in pieces from there. And what I love about that is that gave me my, like my balance, my foundation for the space. We picked up an antique chest, um, also on Facebook Marketplace. And a good friend of mine actually went to an estate sale and snagged these lamps. And after seeing this room, she came to me and said, these belong in here, so I'm gifting them to you, which I so appreciated. And so this room is just, it's special, it's different. I don't know anyone else that has a, a spare bedroom like this. And we added in just some, a few other fun details. This is a wooden duck from Josh's grandmother and she gifted this to us. And this chair actually, I was given this for free um, from the woman that sold us the chest. She had it in her garage and said, hey, this will look really, really good next to it if you want it. And so we took it, which was awesome. And what's really nice about this space too is even though it's the spare, it has a balcony as well. And so our guests have access to outside. If the weather is nice, they can go sit on the patio and drink their coffee. Um, so get some sunshine and out, outside of the really cozy, dark, kind of almost cave-like spare bedroom. When choosing this color, I knew that it was all or nothing with a color this rich and this vibrant and just kind of breathtaking. So I wanted to completely color drench this room. So I started with the walls, then went to the trim. Uh, shortly after, I decided the doors needed to be the same color as well. And then lastly, the ceiling, which was the worst and the hardest, <laughs> um, but it really just made it. I think honestly, very similar to our dining room where I did color drench green and then paired it with matching curtains. I did the same here as well. So I found a very similar rich maroon wine colored velvet curtain. And I think it really just, it makes this room. It really makes it pop. And um, I love that everyone that walks in here legitimately says, wow, that, that feels really good for me. The word home to me really just means comfort. It means peace. I've always thought of home as your safe space, the place where you could just truly be yourself. You could let all your guards down and you had everything surrounding you that made you feel the most you. And so for me, filling a house with special items, making it in warm, soft color palettes and just being a place where I can welcome anyone in and they get that same feeling is the best thing. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.